bathroom done. Now let's see. I've uh, done all the silver, polished all the light bulbs, <laughs> and I waxed the toilet seat. <laughs> well, I'm out of excuses. I guess I'm going to have to sit down. I'm going to have to write. I'm going to have to force myself. Remember when you were a kid and your mom wanted you to write thank you notes, how difficult it was? How you had to force yourself to sit down and do it? Magnify that a hundred thousand times, you give me some idea why it's so damn difficult to sit down and write. I'll do anything to keep from doing it, anything. I'll sharpen pencils. <laughs> Which is fine, except I've got 200 dagger sharp pencils here already. And I don't even use them, I type. Housework. That's another thing. That gives you some idea how much I dread it. Because housework, I hate housework. I'd forgotten how much I hated housework. I'd forgotten a lot of things about being single. I forgot, I forgot what a major role alcohol played in the mating process. I forgot about that. You know, I take a woman out now, I'll meet her over drinks, or I'll wine her and dine her, or I'll bring her back here for a good night drink. It's always alcohol, it's always involved. I remember that started when I was a kid. Uh, we'd go to parties and all my friends and I, we'd spend all night spiking a girl's drink, trying to get her drunk. Guys would do that. Put some vodka in her orange juice. Can't smell her to taste it and get her a little high and take her outside, maybe something will happen. <laughs> Never worked with me, because I always got drunk myself. <laughs> hey, let's go out to the car. Let me throw up first. <laughs> Some guys had that down to a science, boy. Some guys could spike a girl's drink just enough to get lucky. That was the expression that men always use. Shows you how much skill's involved in the seduction process. Hey, did you get lucky? Yeah, I got lucky. She's pregnant, that's the goddamn lucky I got. <laughs> now I gotta get married. Had some friends that happened to, they had to get married. Terrible way to start a marriage because uh, then you're locked into one neither one of you wants. And pretty soon, that same guy that spiked a girl's drink to get her in bed, pretty soon he's spiking her drink, hoping she'll go to sleep. <laughs> and bet me she isn't pretending to be asleep when he comes to bed. Oh, God, here he comes. Because, <laughs> see, guys never thought about that. Guys never thought about birth control at that age, you see. Because that's a man's physical sexual prime. 17, 18, 19, around that age. And nature, in her infinite wisdom, Gives a man his physical sexual prime at that age, at the same time, pimples are breaking out all over his face. <laughs> so here this poor guy's running around with lust bursting from his body and spots bursting out on his face. <laughs> Which I suppose is wise, because no girl will touch him. Oh, zits! <laughs> and the guy's going crazy. He's running around in his perpetual state of arousal. That's the way I was, boy, at that age, man. Anything had turned me on. Mannequins and store windows used to drive me crazy. <laughs> Look at the body on that woman. I'm gonna hang around, wait till they change her. <laughs> it's always so disappointing when he finally did. Ah, no nipples. <laughs> so here you were, running around like that, see? And guys never thought about anything. See, they had no sense of responsibility when it came to that. It was always up to the girl. The onus of birth control was always on the woman, see? And their little word for it was protection. That was her little word for it. Cute little word. Too weak. Wasn't strong enough to penetrate that wall of male lust coming at him, you see. Because that was an alien word to guys. Sometimes a girl would spring that word on you in a crucial situation, and you weren't sure what you meant right away. You got any protection? <laughs> what? <laughs> protection? Don't you have any protection? Well, I got a tire iron in the boot. <laughs> I'll kill anybody that comes up to the car, I promise. <laughs> women don't realize that some of the best protection they had was clothes. I was amazed when women stopped wearing bras, you see. A lot of women quit wearing bras because they felt it was a symbol of male dominance. Any woman that says that has never had a guy trying to unhook one in a heat of passion. <laughs> oh, this male dominance goes right out the window. The guys are back there, oh, what is this? <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know, these damn things are welded or something. <laughs> Nothing cools passion faster than mechanical difficulty, believe me. I always thought they should put combination locks on there. Make it so much easier. If the girl liked it, she'd give you the combination. <laughs> Just run back there, left 44, <laughs> right 13, left 26. Hey, it's off. Look at her, left 44, right 13. <laughs> 
hope there's not a 26. <laughs> See, women just don't realize the frustration that some of their clothes present to a man. They also don't realize that some items of their, of their wardrobe can be very lethal to a man. Take the handbag. <laughs> Kelly, excuse me, Dr. Talbot, I'd like you to meet Kelly Monteith. Hi. Dr. Talbot has written a book about his revolutionary new treatment for hernias called <laughs> Fix That Rupture with Weightlifting. <laughs> and Mr. Monteith is oh. evil. Evil, <laughs> hey, eh? I often wanted to meet one of your fellows because I find your smutty jokes about the groin not only distasteful, but a front to my profession because, <laughs> believe me, after a lifetime of hoisting hernias, there is nothing funny about the groin. Mm. Mm. And speaking as a doctor, I can assure you that getting a quick one in the ghoulies <laughs> is no laughing matter. Mm. Exactly. Not that I'm a prude, but this obsession with wedding tackles gives me the dry heat. Mm. I mean, there are other things in life much more important than an aching crotch. <laughs> yes, my, my sentiments exactly. Mm -hmm. It's been awfully nice talking to you. Mm. But remember, mm. keep it out of the groin. <laughs> mm. Then there's earrings. Ooh, they can be tricky little devils. Take drop earrings, for instance. So called for their propensity for dropping into the most unfortunate places. And then the nun said to the bishop, Practice. That's the only way to get into the habit. Yeah, yeah, you know, that the nuns in the habit. You did magic. Some of the things women put on can be simply terrifying, especially when they come off. Oh, just, uh, just doing a little research. <laughs> Can't write without facts. Look at the facts on her. <laughs> you know, it amazes me how uninhibited we've become in the last 20 years or so, you know? Really incredible. Because, I mean, it used to be you'd never see people in bed together in the movies, much less on television. I mean, when you did, they were always in separate beds and they'd be wearing more clothes than most people today wear when they go to work. <laughs> I can't imagine what it must have been like to have been around in my grandfather's time. Because in those days, from what I gather from the pictures, women, they didn't have bodies. You know, they didn't have breasts and legs and bottoms. And I think they were born fully clothed from the neck down. <laughs> so that the most uh, a red blooded, healthily sexed male could possibly hope for would be a quick flash of, uh, of an ankle. More bubbly, Constance? I do believe you're trying to make me tipsy. Well, it won't make any difference. I am not going to bare my ankles. Oh, Constance, you're such a temptress. I give you everything for one look at your... No, 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 no. A thousand times, no. Oh, Constance, I beg of you. Have some chicken. This is not the leg I want. <laughs> oh, Constance, don't keep me in suspense any longer. I'm exploding with desire for you. Can't you think of anything but ankles? How long have you been waiting for a look at my ankle? Fourteen years. <laughs> if I did, if, mind, would you still respect me afterwards? But of course I would. You wouldn't tell the other chaps that I was easy? Waiting fourteen years is not easy. <laughs> of course I won't tell. Do you think I'm some sort of cad? For God's sakes, Constance. Very well, then. I'll do it. You will? Switch off the light. Oh. <laughs> We're outside. All right, then. Turn your back. OK. Now? No, not yet. Oh, Constance. You've only been waiting 14 years, Whitney. <laughs> Men always want to rush things. Oh, but... You must learn to do things more slowly, Whitney. Oh, Constance. Very slowly. Oh, my God, you're fantastic. Whitney! 
Now, Constance? Now, Whitney. I can't believe it. I'm finally going to see a woman's ankle. <laughs> what is it, my dearest? Why, it's just like mine. <laughs> Only bigger. In those days, everything was in the mine. Today, it's all out front. I've been working on my tan all week. What do you think? Pretty good. Maybe a little more garlic. <laughs> Other than that, it's the best chicken you've ever made. <laughs> well, so all my shoes shined. Now I can sit down and write. Can't write unless your shoes are shiny. Because you can tell a man by the shine on his shoes. You can also tell a man by the company he keeps. Well, let's get to work here. Get to work. Yes, sir, get to work. Another day, another dollar. Time waits for no man. He also serves who stands and waits. <laughs> Not in any restaurant I go into. Come on now, come on now, let's go. Busy hands or happy hands? Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Time heals all wounds. <laughs> a penny saved is a penny earned. On the other hand, a fool and his money are soon parted. Come on, get to work now. Procrastination is the mother of invention. <laughs> That's not right, is it? <laughs> ah, better look it up. <laughs> Procrastination, here we go. Yes, see, delay, delay, delay. Delay. See British Rail. <laughs> I love reference books, dictionaries, encyclopedias, thesauruses, tools of a writer's trade. Because without them, he'd have to write. <laughs> That's why I don't think Shakespeare had reference books, because he would never turn out the amount that he did. See, Shakespeare was born at exactly the right time in history for him. I just, I've often wondered, how would Shakespeare fare if he was alive today? For one thing, I don't, we'd have the, don't think we'd have the pleasure of his great works because he'd probably be writing for television. It's way, way, way too wordy, Will. My God, there's nothing in here but words, 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 words. To be or not to be, that is a question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> really, sweetheart, you should know. Write for television now. Just say, should I kill myself or shouldn't I? Oh, and this one line, aye, there's the rub. What are you doing writing filth? <laughs> Besides, it's way too long. And who wants to hear about some loony Danish prince? We've decided to make this into a half hour situation comedy. Make the guy a plumber. Put in some good little snappy toilet jokes. Is this a ball cock I see before me? <laughs> oh, and uh, Willie, I read your Richard III. <laughs> What are you, nuts? The lead a hunchback? <laughs> hey, this is no longer the year of the disabled. <laughs> Richard three before Richard two. I mean, they made Superman one and Rocky one and then Superman two and Rocky two. You're working backwards, Willie. Nobody wants to watch a sequel to nothing. <sighs> Look, take a cue from guys like Steven Spielberg and Sylvester Stallone, although I know you're not in their league. <laughs> Willie, Willie, I don't know. Oh, and Willie, get rid of the skull. It's disgusting. <laughs> it would have been just the same for somebody like Beethoven. I can hear him now, cocktail pianist at the Pink Parrot Lounge. <laughs> Here's a little something I just wrote. In fact, Barry Manilow is thinking about putting it on his new album. Hey. Hey, fella. Do you know Melancholy Baby? <laughs> hey. What's the matter with you? Are you deaf? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Say. Do that again. Yes. Okay. Well, the 
ironing's done. Now I can sit down to write. Got to have press socks. <laughs> if you're gonna write. Oh, you got to, otherwise all the wrinkles bunch up and your feet go to sleep. <laughs> and you can't concentrate. And if you think that's far-fetched, you should see some of the things that I've come up with. Anything to sit down and write at this typewriter. Take the time I got the bird's nest off the chimney. Now that's a relatively simple task. All you need is a ladder, a long pole, and just knock it off. Ah, but that's too easy and too quick when you got a blank piece of paper waiting for you in the typewriter. I got rid of my bird's nest <laughs> from the inside. Once I'd removed it, well, then I had to find it a new home. <clears throat> I think it would look good up in Scotland. <laughs> I've always thought that some of the great wonders of the world came about because somebody couldn't face that blank page. would look great over there. <laughs> well, now I got the kitchen cleaned. Now I can sit down and write. Can't write with a dirty kitchen. Drives me crazy. But the only time I ever get it clean is when I got something to write. I could sweep the floor. Yeah, that'd take forever. <laughs> it does with me. I almost went crazy sweeping the floor once. I remember this, I was sweeping the kitchen floor and I got all the dirt into a pile in the middle of the floor, right? Then I got the dustpan out, then I swept the dirt up into the dustpan. But no matter how many times I would sweep the dirt into the dustpan, there was always one little line of dirt left. <laughs> sweep it up again, one little line. Sweep it up again, one damn little line. Almost drove me crazy. I got so obsessed, I got the vacuum cleaner out just to pick up that one little line of dirt. Which it wouldn't do because the bag was full, but I didn't know that. I thought it was broken. And it was relatively new, so I was furious. I get mad with mechanical things like that that won't work. So I took it back to the repairman. And boy, when I get mad, my American slang comes right out. I took that vacuum cleaner and I said, this vacuum cleaner sucks. <laughs> he said, well, what'd you bring it in for? <laughs> Which really took the sting out of my argument because I realized, uh, you know, when you say something sucks, that's a derogatory saying, but applied to a vacuum cleaner, it's a virtue. If a salesman told me this vacuum cleaner sucks, I say, great, I'll take it. <laughs> but I had that one line of dirt I had to get up. I get obsessed by those things. I suppose it shouldn't be right for a male. Well, that's kind of silly, but that's just, uh, well, that's a stereotype, you know. We've all been taught to believe that men basically are slobs, you know? Real pegs. And that women, they're the neat and they're the tidy ones. Everything's always in place. They're always picking things up. I always believed that till last week. Come in. I can't stand it, the bane of my existence. This isn't... <laughs> oh, my God, you've been burgled! <laughs> what? Not that I can see. You mean your flat always looks like this? Of course not. Sometimes it's a mess. <laughs> Would you like a drink? Uh, yeah, uh, anything I can drink straight from the bottle. <laughs> I can easily wash a glass. Oh, well, all right, um, the scotch is fine. Now, let's see, where's the sink? Oh, no, no, uh, I'm fine. I don't need a drink at all, that's, that's fine. Well, what would you like to do now? You know what I'd really like to do? No, what would you really like to do? What I'd really like to do is Hoover. <laughs> Hoover? Yeah, you know, <laughs> picks up dirt and crumbs and... Are you gay? <laughs> what? Well, it's a known fact that gay people are obsessively neat and tidy. A known fact? Well, I never heard that. And I've never seen a government health warning on a vacuum cleaner that said, Danger! Obsessive use of this instrument can cause gayness. Well, are you? No, I'm not. Good. Because I could use a man tonight. <laughs> well, you don't beat around the bush, do you? <laughs> and you also don't beat around the carpet. <laughs> Couch or the cushions or anything. What the? Hey! What, what is that? Honey balls. 
Look, just call me Kelly, okay? I'm really not much for nicknames. I don't care how accurate they are. I hate to say to disappoint you, but it's not a nickname. It's a pudding I made two months ago. Oh, great. I don't believe this. I bring a woman home for a drink, and I end up being accused of being a house-proud old queen with a pants full of honey balls. <laughs> the funny side of it. No, I'm a comedian, not a contortionist. <laughs> hey, look, uh, where's your bathroom, anyway? Through that door and, and turn right at the pile of laundry. But be careful, I've got some things soaking in the sink. No! I mind my roller skates! <laughs> Do you know there's something dead in your bathroom? <laughs> well, that's my wig. No? I saw your wig. Your wig's on the toilet handle. The dead thing is in the bathtub behind the tire. Oh, that's my dog. He's not dead, just smells that way. Well, I suppose he regards it as his contribution. You know, you don't need a dog, you need a goat. Hey, look, uh, why don't we go to my place, huh? Let's but go. don't you want to stay here and mess about? Well, no, I, I find it very difficult to uh, mess about when there's uh, this much mess about. <laughs> Okay. Straighten out the phone cord here. <laughs> can't write with a twisted phone cord. You get a call, you can't understand anybody because their words are all twisted up. Hello? Well, I think I've done about everything I can do in here. I could go clean that girl's flat. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's see, what was her name? Oh, it's terrible. Isn't that awful? Spend an evening with a woman? You can't remember her name? I remember once I spent the entire night with a woman, and the next morning I could not remember her name. God, she was furious. Got so mad she divorced me. <laughs> I wonder if that's why the word baby has become so popular in, in language. Because it's such a useful word. Really, it really comes in very handy when you can't remember a woman's name. Ooh, everything about you turns me on. Just everything. Will you look? Will you talk? Even the sound of your name. Oh, your name. Ooh, Gloria is such a lovely name. Gloria? Glorious. Glorious names are, are, are glorious. Leslie? Leslie? Let's leave. Let's leave all this. Get in there for some of that. Oh, Amanda. Amanda? What? You didn't let me finish. Amanda's got to do what Amanda's got to do. I don't think you know my name. What? Oh, baby. Not know your name? Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby. Okay. Well, nothing like an evening out after a hard day at the typewriter. Well, can't write unless you have a break now and then, right? Now, let's see. What's this woman's name? Paula. Yes, Paula. Don't want to forget this. Paula. What does it rhyme with? Baller. <laughs> Paula Baller. That's right. Remember that. No Paula, no Baller. <laughs> no, I gotta remember it, because she's divorced, and I'm divorced, so that should uh, present an interesting evening. Conjures up all sorts of potential hazards. Well, one good thing, if the conversation flags, we can always show each other our scars. <laughs> and, uh, then we got Mary, and then we got a house, and then we got divorced, and then she got the house. <laughs> And the rest is history. Are you still friends? No, but our lawyers are. <laughs> it's more or less the same with me. Yeah. Except mine wasn't always asking me to have a vasectomy. Ah, <laughs> sounds like a wise man. <laughs> well, let me ask you, do you, uh, do you ever miss your ex-husband? You've got to be joking. It's all in the past. As far as I'm concerned, he just doesn't exist anymore. Boy, it's nice to hear you've adjusted so easily. <laughs> Something funny? Laugh. What? <laughs> Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what am I laughing at? I'm sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's sitting over there? My ex-husband. What? <laughs> All right. But as long as you promise I won't have to make breakfast as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is he? Don't look round. I don't want him to think I've seen him. I just want him to think I'm having a wonderful time. Wait a minute, I thought you were having a wonderful time. You know what I mean? No, 
I don't know what you mean. <laughs> well, well uh, let's have one more drink and that'll really put me in the mood, big boy. <laughs> oh, God, baby, you are such a turn-on. Hey, don't overdo it. Look at me as if I'm the most exciting man you have ever met. What? Don't argue. It'll drive her crazy. Well, who? My ex-wife. <laughs> My God, she's huge. <laughs> Not that one. It's a, she's the one at the corner table there. She's sitting with the... <laughs> oh, God, I don't believe she's with that creep. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't believe he's with that old boot. <laughs> at least his has got hair. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not all sprouting from a mole on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. What do I care? I mean, it's her life now. I couldn't care less. Me neither. If he wants to hang around with tarts, that's his affair. Yeah. Look, uh, I think I'll just pop downstairs before we go. All right. Ooh, when you pass that corner table, would you take a deep breath and throw your shoulders back? She hates women with big boobs. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get back to your place. Uh, Two minutes, and I'm all yours. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Hmm? The lady at the corner table? Yeah? She asked me to give you this. Ah. Oh. oh, I knew it. Couldn't resist me. Probably wants me to drop by later and uh, show her what a real man is like, you know? <laughs> ah, my dearest darling, don't forget, alimony's due Tuesday. <laughs> I promise you, the check will be there on time. Look, last time it wasn't my fault. Uh, there, there was a postal strike. <laughs> Now, look, I, I'm sitting down at the typewriter. I got a lot of work to do. No, I've already cleaned the house. No, I shined my shoes. I shined the pots and pans. I did all the ironing. And yes, I even unwound the phone cord. <laughs> so I, I got to go. I'll, I'll talk to you later, OK? Yeah. Oh, and uh, I hope you got your date back to the old folks home on time. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I guess I got to get to work here. Yep. Do a little writing. That's what I got to do. Right in here. Is that a smudge on the television? <laughs> I can't write with a smudge on the TV screen. <laughs> 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 